good morning. Man, old, old man Winter just has decided he doesn't want to let go, right? What is going on with that? Um, it's good to see all of you here this morning, and happy Mother's Day to all the moms, right, out there. We are going to have a special uh, time for our mothers here in just a few minutes. We have some gifts for y'all, and uh, we'll pray over you. Um, it, uh, yeah, we're going to have a good time celebrating, celebrating moms today. Um, when you look, there are, so, there are so many stories in the Bible of good godly women that we can use as, ex, as examples in our uh, daily lives. And in the book of Proverbs, the very last chapter of Proverbs, they saved the best for last, right, brother? Um, King Lemuel talked about what it means to be a good, godly woman. I'm going to share a little bit of that with you. Who can find a virtuous woman? This is verse 10 of Proverbs 31. For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. But, but you can spoil me if you want to. Um, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. We certainly know that at our house, don't we, Kimmy? She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her, out her hand to the poor. Well, this King James Version, bleh, there are tongue twisters all throughout it. She reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. Um, so that's a lot, right? You ladies have a, a tough job. You have to keep guys like us in line, raise the children, the work of the household, plus some of you work outside the household. Um, it is not lost on us, and we thank you and appreciate you and love you so much. Uh, and again, later on in the service, we will, we will celebrate you even more. Uh, as we begin our service this morning and celebrate our moms, let's also be thinking about just focusing on what we can bring to this worship service this morning. Uh, focus on uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Put away the, the noise of uh, the week and, and the troubles and the frustrations that we may face throughout the week. This is where we find peace this is where we find comfort. This is where we find strength. And uh, the Lord is definitely here among us. As we sing uh, our praise and worship song this morning, He is here. Before we do that, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just want to thank you and praise you for this glorious day that you've blessed us with. A little bit chilly, but Lord, you have filled this place with the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for uh, our good godly mothers, Lord, and all that they mean to us in our lives and all they do for us uh, as we celebrate them today. Lord, I pray that you, uh, you just bless this service, bless the music, bless the Word of God, uh, Lord, and just... Um, 
just Lord, just, just fill us to overflowing with your spirit this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand together and sing, He is here. morning uh, we're going to have uh, our prayer time um, and then uh, Pastor Andy will have a special prayer later on over our moms so as we're going to the Lord in prayer this morning um, first of all let's be thinking about those folks who were affected by the the tornado Friday night uh, I was up there in Rockingham County Friday night and um, and that was uh, that was a wild storm it was pretty crazy up there, and, and really in a lot of areas near us, um, tr- you know, trees on houses and, and like big trees, 100-year-old trees that were toppled down. And um, I was up at Rockingham County Community College Friday night where the sheriff had set the parking lot up there as a staging area, and there were dozens of fire trucks and rescue trucks and, and firefighters all over the place. They were having to to walk through the debris and over trees to, to get to houses to make sure people were okay because they, they didn't have enough time to, to cut the trees and make a path. They wanted to get to these houses and make sure folks were okay. So they were having to, to really work hard to, to, to get to these folks. And so we need to be thinking about these, these folks. Fortunately, nobody was, was hurt, praise the Lord, um, but they're dealing with a lot of cleanup and and, and the mess of dealing with insurance and fixing a house and all that kind of stuff. So please be thinking about and praying for them. Um, we need to be praying for Royal and for our other uh, shut-ins. Um, and uh, we just uh, sure that we have a lot of folks on our hearts that we know um, are in need. Uh, my Uncle John, uh, we need to be thinking about and praying for him. He is uh, dealing with a physical battle right now, and so I pray that you be with that. You pray for John Pierce um, and his wife Chris, my aunt and uncle. So uh, be, please be praying for them. Uh, and again, I'm sure that you have uh, folks that you um, are thinking about that are on your heart, dealing with spiritual battles, whatever it may be. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you and praise you for this glorious day once again. And Lord, Lord, as we come to you in prayer this morning, uh, Lord, I pray that you be with those folks who uh, have lost so much uh, up in Rockingham County from the storm. We thank you, Lord, that, that nobody was hurt, um, but Lord, there's a lot of work to be done. And so I pray that you bless those folks in a mighty special way, that you give them the strength that they need. Um, but Lord, that you, that you help lift their spirits. It can be... Um, it can be defeating to go through something like that, Lord, and I pray that you help all of those folks know that, you're, that your hand is still on them, that you've never left them, uh, you kept them safe. And so, Lord, we just thank you for that, and, and, and thank you for what you're going to do uh, in the lives of those folks. Lord, we pray for our shut-ins, for, for the folks who uh, we know and love that would, would love to be here with us uh, this morning, but, but just can't that you would bless them with an extra special touch of grace, Lord God, and that you would um, 
uh, bring healing to their lives. Lord, there are so many folks that we know that are struggling right now with, with physical battles, and so, Lord, I pray that you, that you touch them, that you touch their bodies, Lord, but, but also um, uh, touch their spirit, Lord, and, and help them to uh, know and understand that you are with them, that you are working in their lives in a, in, in a great way. Uh, and, and we uh, thank you for that. Lord God, I pray for our law enforcement and our first responders who put their lives on the line each and every day for us and, and work tirelessly, uh, putting their needs aside and, and in order to um, help others. Uh, our doctors and nurses that take care of our loved ones, we, we, we thank you, Lord, for, for giving folks that desire to want to help others and for blessing them with the strength and the energy to do just that. And Lord, we, we pray for our church, uh, uh, specifically Park Place, right, where you know the, the needs of this church. And, and Lord, I pray that you, that you bless us tremendously, Lord, and help us to be able to continue to minister to others and do your work. I pray for um, uh, opportunities, Lord, that you, that you present opportunities for us to be able to spread the gospel message, Lord, because that's th that's our goal. That's what we want to do, Lord. We want to help others come to know you and love you and, and, and trust you and feel that Holy Spirit uh, working in their lives. So, Lord, as we continue with our worship service this morning, I pray that you uh, bless Pastor Andy as he brings us the message you would have him to share with us this morning. Lord, bless our time together with our mothers uh, throughout the day. Help them to know that we love and appreciate them, not only today, but every day. Lord, we ask all of these things in your most precious and holy name. Amen. Um, so, you know, there really aren't any mother-specific hymns. So earlier in the week, I called my mom, and I asked what her favorite hymn was. So that's what we're going to sing today. It is called, Nearer My God to Thee. And I didn't really know, don't really know this hymn very well. I do now. But um, Kimmy pulled it up on YouTube, and I started listening to it. And of course, the first uh, video that comes up is the BYU Men's Choir singing it at like, you know, an octave so high. And I'm like, there's no way in the world we're going to be able to sing this, this hymn. And then fortunately, Kay found a key a little more suitable for myself and all of the rest of us. Um, but as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. Psalm 73, verse 28. Let's all stand together and sing, Nearer my God to Thee. All you moms, 
I want to see you all up here at the front. Come on up. Coming up, let me give you an update, an encouraging update. On Thursday, I had lunch with Pastor Ware, and uh, let me just assure you, everything is on go. Green Street's uh, process is going to be a little lengthier than ours, but uh, they want to do things right. Ladies, just make one good straight line. One, because here in a moment, I'm going to have some of you to step forward. So make one good straight, distinct line. So I hope everybody heard that. Green Street is, is uh, eager to uh, move forward and they will move forward. Things are going to fall into place. It may take a couple of months, but we'll keep the ship afloat and have church here ready. And when that time is right, you're going to see a great, great change here at Park Place. So we've got a nice lengthy line and we're giving every mother a special gift, but we're going to recognize I've always done this in these almost 40 years, recognize some special mothers. Number one is our eldest, our eldest mother. Okay, any mothers that are 60 years or older, step forward. 60 year old, man, the line really moved. All right, any mothers that are 70 or older, either step, and if some of them, no, no liars in heaven, if, 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 if I'd eliminated, you step back. All right, any mothers, all right, now be listening, any mothers 80 or older. Now we see some coming back, but still some are falling. All right, what about 90? Any mothers 90? I got to holler because you made the, any 90 or older. Now, if you're staying forward, that means you're 90 or older. No 90. Okay, 80, 81. Did I hit an age there? Is 81? Anybody older than 81? Huh, 80, 88, let me just move forward. Anybody older than 88 other than Miss Thelma? 88 years young is our eldest mother. Let's give her a hand. All right, just stay there, Miss Thelma. Somebody's going to be joining you. Now our youngest mother. Any mothers 20 or younger? Now, no liar. No liars in heaven, Diane. No liars in heaven. 30 or younger, 40 or younger, 50 or younger. Well, we got a 40 or younger. We got, okay. got one right here. Right here. Where? 40 or younger. Right here. All right, there's our youngest mother. Don't know her name, but the Lord does. Miss Crystal. Miss, Miss Crystal. Miss Crystal. Our youngest mother. All right, now the mother with the most children. Any mother with 10 or more? Good Lord. I've had, I've had them, I've had a few. Nine, nine children. Eight, going eight, going seven. Six, five, four, Diane with four children. That's a mother with most yes. children is four. That. And then always recognize one more, the grandmother with the most grandchildren or great-grandchildren. Anyone with 10 or more? Okay, somebody move. 10 or more? Okay, both of them. Okay, 10, 11, 12, they're still standing. 13, 14 grandchildren. How many grandchildren you got, Diane? 10. You got 10. How many has Miss Thelma got? 10. So they tied. Yeah, we're talking about grand and great grand. 
17. I, I don't believe anybody's going to beat that one. So yeah, I would say Ms. so. Ms. Thelman's got that as well. Hey. Miss Joyce has seven, so she's, she was close, but not quite 17. Well, let's have a prayer over this line of special, special people. Father, we bow to down Mother's Day. We thank you for this line of mothers across these altars. Our eldest, our youngest, most children, most grandchildren. What a privilege it is to be a mother. Help us to see today from scripture what a marvelous mother appears to be. So bless each lady here today. May she be treated with honor and dignity as the queen of the home, the hub of the home, that keeps the home going. Bless our mothers today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now all you men out there ought to give these ladies a hand. So give them a well-deserved hand. <laughs> of our mothers, whatever the case is. Take your Bibles this morning. I've chosen the passage of scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 1. You'll find it right before 2 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1. While you're turning there, it was yesterday evening, uh, there sitting and kind of scrolling uh, with the remote through the channel and found the Kentucky Derby. Now, I'm not a horse fan, not a race fan, not at all. In fact, I'm afraid of horses. Except one time, I do remember one horse ride I was really enjoying. Finally, my parents said, it's time to get off the horse, time to go. I said, I don't want to get off the horse. I want to keep riding the horse. I want to stay on the horse. Until finally, the Kmart manager came out and unplugged the horse, and then I had to get off. <laughs> Amen. Remember that course, put a quarter in there in front of Kmart, and it gave you that ride. Otherwise... I think horses know that I'm afraid of them. But it reminds me of a story, an old Kentucky redneck uh, had this old mule. And he wanted to always, he always was mesmerized by the Kentucky Derby. And so he devised, he came up and crafted this thoroughbred horse looking uh, contraption that would slide over the head of his mule and fit snugly over the head of his mule and made his mule appear to be a thoroughbred racehorse. And so he was able to get that thing into the Kentucky Derby. And there are those stalls, you know, they got these stalls that they open up and the horses come charging out as I saw yesterday. So there he was with that old mule, with that thoroughbred thing slid over his head. But just before the Gates were open, the old mule sneezed, and the force of that sneeze drove that thing off of his head, and there he was exposed. And the jockey in the stall next to it looked over and laughed and looked at the old Kentucky redneck and said, you know you don't have a chance to win with that old mule. To that he said, sir, I don't care about winning, I just wanted to see what it felt like being here, Amen. So I don't know if I'm going to win today at this sermon, but I just want to see, it feel, see what it feels like being in the house of God. 1 Samuel chapter 1, find in your bulletin the uh, outline the, of the message insert that you can take some notes on. A marvelous mother, a marvelous mother by the name of Hannah. Notice in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse number 1, the first thing I want you to see is Hannah's spouse, her spouse, her husband. 
So notice verse one. Now there was a certain man, and I'm just gonna move down about to the middle of the verse, and his name was Elkanah. Now all the other names in verse one of people and places, you can help yourself to pronounce them. I've learned a long time ago about half or more of the names in the Old Testament I can't even pronounce. My Bible even has the names broken down in syllables and a couple of them make me stumble. So you help yourself pronouncing them. I tell you, some of the parents in the Old Testament were cruel. Look at some of the names they named their children. I'm telling you, some unbelievable names. But a certain man named Elkanah. Now look at verse two. And he had two wives. Now let's just pause right there, men, and say Elkanah had some big time problems. Can I get a witness right there? Amen. One wife is enough to take care of and have, but when you got two, you might have some problems. But that's Hannah's spouse, that's her husband. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Peninnah. And notice verse two's ending. And Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. So we see Hannah's spouse, her, her husband, Elkanah, and he had two wives, one with children, the other, Hannah, had no children. Which leads to, secondly, Hannah's sorrow. Notice in verse three and following her sorrow, what's, what's beginning now to unfold in this scenario, this situation, this story. And this man, Elkanah, went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, who was the priest, we'll see further in the passage. The two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priest of the Lord, were there. That's another sermon, Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli. That's a, I've got a great revival message on that one. And when the time was that Elkanah offered... Notice he gave to Peninnah, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters, portions. But look at verse five. But unto Hannah, he, Elkanah, gave a worthy portion. It means a double portion. He gave to Hannah twice as much as he gave to Peninnah. Why? For he loved Hannah. But look at verse five's ending. Here's why she had sorrow, grief. But the Lord had shut up her womb. She was barren. Hannah could not have children at this point in her life. And then look at verse six. Here's where this Sarah really becomes intensified. And her adversary, her opponent, her enemy, and it was none other than Panina. Her adversary also provoked her sore or severely, badgered her, provoked her. Why? Because she didn't have children. For a Jewish woman in this time, in biblical time, for a Jewish woman to be barren, to not be able to have children was indicative of her maybe having a problem with God, with the Lord, maybe a problem with sin. And so they were looked down upon. They were treated badly. So Panina provoked Hannah, provoked her for to make her fret. That means in the Hebrew, miserable. Why? Because the Lord had shut up her womb. 
Verse seven, as he did so year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she, Peninnah, provoked her, Hannah, therefore she wept and did not eat. That's Hannah. She was just badgered and provoked. Brought sorrow, she wept, wouldn't eat. And so look at verse eight, then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? Why are you crying? And why eatest thou not? Why are you not eating? And why is it thy heart grieved? Look at this ending of verse 8, what her husband, what Elkin has said to Hannah. But it did no good. Look what he says. Am not I better to thee than ten sons? But that didn't do anything for her sorrow. For you see, she didn't have 10 sons. She didn't even have one son. That's why she had sorrow. She was barren. The Lord had supposedly, apparently, shut up her womb. Panina kept badgering her, provoking her. And seemingly for years, we don't know the time span specifically, but I would assume, I would imagine, this went on for quite a while. So now look at verse 9, we get to the meat of the message. We're about to uncover what a marvelous mother is all about. I wonder this morning how many mothers want to be more than a mother how many this morning want to be a marvelous, a marvelous mother? So notice thirdly that on the outline, her supplication. And three things I want you to see about her supplication. Notice first of all, her promise. Now look at verse nine. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. There the priest is sitting there and observing. Look at verse 10. And she, Hannah, was in bitterness of soul. That sorrow was deep, pressing down to the very soul of her. And look, look at verse 10. And she prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. That means she wept in anguish. But verse 11 is the key. In her sorrow, in her bitterness, I would imagine tears coming down her cheeks. She's praying. And look at verse 11. And she Hannah vowed a vow. She made a commitment. She made a commitment to the Lord. She vowed a vow, notice, and said, O Lord of hosts, she's praying. She's praying to, to the God in heaven who had shut up her womb. O Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child. Lord, if you'll give me a son. Lord, if you'll not forget me, but remember me. I make this vow, I make this commitment. Look what it wants. Lord, if you'll give me a son, a man-child, then will I give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. I remember distinctly before both of our children, we got a daughter and a son, about three years apart. I remember before both of them, each one of them were born, Joyce would pray, Repeatedly, Lord, give us children that we can raise and give back to you. Because listen, every mother this morning, your children, 
and dads, your children are not really yours. They're God's gift to you. God has loaned them to you. They really belong to him. And he's given them to you, entrusted them to you for you to raise. For you to raise in order that you can give them back to God. So notice her promise here in verses 9 through 11. Lord, I make this vow, I make this commitment. Give me a son and I'll give him back to you. But notice the protest. Eli the priest, his condemnation. What do you mean, preacher Andy? Look at verse 12. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. The priest observed her there in the temple praying and he notices her mouth. He marks her mouth. What did he notice? Look at verse 13. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Notice she's praying from her heart. Only her lips moved. You ever prayed and words really never came out? But deep down in your heart, you knew what you were praying you know, the Bible says, even when we don't know words to utter, the Holy Spirit knows how to interpret those to the Lord. Her lips are moving, but nothing's coming out. And Eli the priest notices this. He marks her mouth, notice. But her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been. You know what Eli thought? He thought she was drunk. She had been drunk and been intoxicated. There she's in the temple in a posture of prayer. Her lips are moving, but not one word is being uttered. And Eli said unto her, look at verse 14. I guess like a good Baptist preacher would say, how long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. Hannah, you're drunk. Put away your wine. That was Eli's condemnation. But look at verse 15, Hannah's clarification. Hannah had to clarify some things. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Is there a mother in here today that's ever been there? Maybe before you ever had children, maybe after you had children, maybe after your children were grown and teenagers, maybe when they become rebellious, you ever found yourself pouring out your heart before God in behalf of your children. Verse 16, count not thy handmaid for a dollar of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto, you know what she's saying in clarification? I am praying in the spirit. From a broken heart. Don't worry, preacher. I'm not drunk. I'm dedicated. And so in verse 17 and 18 is the essence of her prayer. Here in her supplication. Look at verse 17. Then Eli answered and said, after he realizes the situation, go in peace and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition, thy supplication, thy prayer that thou hast asked of him. Eli put his blessing on Hannah and her prayer. Verse 18, we come back to her. 
And she said, Let thine handmaiden find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and now did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. I've got to believe her countenance changed from being sad now to glad. She poured her heart out to God, made that vow, that commitment, had to deal with the preacher, had to clarify what was truly going on. And now she wraps up her prayer. Which brings us to number four, notice. Not only her spouse, Elkanah, who's kind of now in the, in the shadows of all of this, her, her sorrow that's been going on, no, no child for her, Panina just provoking her, provoking her, her supplication, her prayer. Now look at verse 19. And they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord. A priority. And returned and came to their house in, to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife. That means they had that appropriate relationship that's only between a husband and a wife. Elkanah knew Hannah's wife. And look at verse 19's ending. Here's the miraculous. And the Lord remembered her. The Lord remembered her. Verse 20, circle. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had what? Conceived. It happened. Conception. The seed was planted. God remembered her. When the time was right, she conceived that she bear a son, called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. She had a son. Her prayer was answered. She named him Samuel. Now you can read verses 21 down through through verse 26, but drop down to verse 27. For this child I prayed. How many mothers in the room today prayed for your children? Prayed that God would give you a son, prayed that God would give you a daughter, prayed that God would give you children that you'd have the privilege to raise for him. And the Lord hath given me my petition which I ask of him, God has answered my prayer. Verse 28, therefore also have I lent him to the Lord. You know what that means? I have granted him to the Lord. I have given him to the Lord. Lord, he's really not mine. He's yours. He shall be lent to the Lord and he worshiped the Lord there. Samuel went on to become a great man of God. Largely because his mother gave the commitment to the Lord that I'll give him to you. Now I want to share with you some application. These aren't printed. I want to give you at least seven I'll give them to you quickly. If you can't get them down, you can watch on Facebook the rerun of the service. You can find it, uh, watch it this afternoon, tonight, or sometime during the week. But for, for application, let me give you just seven, I believe, characteristics of a marvelous mother. 
Number one, first and foremost, she prays and spends time in the Word of God. By praying, she's spending time with God and in the Word of God. She prays and spend time and spends time in the Word of God. How many mothers here today spend time in the Word of God? For your own personal guidance, for your own personal devotion. With children or without children. A marvelous mother prays and spends time in the Word of God. Number two, she has learned to trust the Lord for her every need. How many mothers today know God is trustworthy? Whatever need you have, you've learned to trust the Lord for every need. Number three, a marvelous mother is obedient to God and seeks to serve him. You want to be obedient. You want to do what God leads you to do. Serve him. Be obedient and serve him. How many mothers today are committed to serving God in obedience? Number four, she loves her family devotedly. Even at times, when it may seem or be a reality that your family really don't love you back like they should. She loves her family devotedly. Number five, she exemplifies Christ to her family. How many mothers today do your children see Christ in you? Number six, she's an encourager. A marvelous mother is an encourager. And number seven, a marvelous mother loves unconditionally and generously. She gives herself to the fullest. She loves unconditionally when others expect Conditional love. And she loves generously as well as graciously. How many mothers today desire to have those seven characteristics? How many mothers today want to be a marvelous mother? Would you bow as we get ready for a time of invitation? Brother Chris will be singing the invitational hymn. If you're here today as a mother, there's a need in your life. First and foremost, are you sure today if you were to die, you're going to heaven? That Jesus is your Lord and Savior. If not today, then if you're not a Christian mother, then there's something lacking. It's one thing to be a mother. It's another thing to be a Christian mother. Maybe you're here today and as a mother, your heart is breaking over some son or daughter who's gone wayward. When's the last time you said, Lord, he's really not mine. He's yours or she's yours. I need to recommit, give them back to you. And you'll pray with a broken heart. Bring that son or daughter back to the way they were raised. Would you stand? Bow if you need to come today for any reason. Maybe you're here today and you're not a member of Park Place Baptist. You'd like to join this fellowship. As Chris sings, these altars are open. This invitation is yours. As we stand, Brother Chris sings. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus. Speak that my soul may hear. You need to come, you come. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus. Maybe a dad needs to come with me. His mother, kneel in an old fashioned altar.
speak to my heart. Oh, speak to my heart. A marvelous mother. Speak to my heart, I pray. She sp prays, spends time in God's Word. Yielded Trust Him for every need. Seeking Obedient and serves Him. Oh, Loves her family devotedly. My heart Exemplifies Christ in her life. And encourages her. Speak to my heart. She loves Lord unconditionally Jesus, and generously. Purge me from every sin. We're about to finish. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus. Help me the lost to To my heart, oh, speak to my heart, speak to my heart, I pray. Yielded and still, seeking thy will, oh, speak to my heart today. In our business. Benediction prayers is heads bowed, eyes closed. Preacher Andy, I want to be, I want to be by God's grace, a marvelous mother. Would you slip your hand up if that's your prayer? I want to be a marvelous mother by the grace of God. Father, as we end this service, may mothers today be honored or be memorialized for the life they've lived in raising their children and giving them back to you. Bring us back, Lord, Wednesday, 630. Those who will, as we share in the fellowship building, time of prayer and Bible study service. Go with us throughout the rest of the day. May all the mothers here today be treated lovingly by their families by their husbands, by their children, in a way that shows respect to them that's highly deserved. In Jesus' name we pray. God's people said, amen. amen. Good crowd here today. Greet each other as you leave. <laughs>